Star Wars, the accolade suffers from two sins. One, it's boring. The other is it looks cheap. Well, folks, I just got done watching episodes one and two of The Accolade, and I'm only going to review episode one because I don't feel like talking about episode two yet because there's some real dumb plot points that might be interesting to go over at a later date. But we're going to talk about episode one. I will have... I don't care. I'm going to spoil it. doesn't matter. This is irrelevant. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're going to be like... It's amazing how many shills there are out there just defending this. And I will say, on first impression, it is not the, it's not offensively bad, other than the costumes and the makeup and it being boring. <laughs> other than those three things, it's not offensively bad. Like, if you just don't pay attention, you're going to be like, ah, oh, whatever. There's supposed to be a mystery. Mystery is solved in the first episode. So I don't understand why this is a thing. Um, but let's discuss. I, I will go over some of the finer plot points, but briefly, uh, there's a, a there's a murder that happens of a Jedi, and then uh, a young woman is accused of doing said murder. It's pretty obvious what's going on the whole time, and then a bunch of uh, plot contrivances happen in order to get these people to get the whole cast together, and then you're like, yeah. Then we can move on to the greater mystery, which is I don't know. So... I'm just shocked that they list this as a mystery. For those of you who need a reminder, this was the first episode is written and directed by Leslie Headland. Again, she was the former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein. Just want to point that out. And she's getting away scot-free, and she gets to do shows and Star Wars and ruin Star Wars. It's not even so much ruined. It's just like, it's just I don't care anymore. I have complete apathy for it. This is another one of those Reva redemption arcs that we're going to go on if you watched Obi-Wan Kenobi. You have to remember, folks, I have watched every single stinking thing that Star Wars has put out, and it's all pretty trash. I watched all of Book of Boba Fett. I watched all of The Mandalorian. I've seen all of it, every single second of all of this. And at this point, I think I'm just hate-watching. There's a shocking amount of sites that tell you how great this thing was. And I'm like, what is so great about this? Watching a 100-pound girl fight Jedi Masters on... She keeps saying she's unarmed, but she's not unarmed because she has weapons. She's using throwing stars against someone who could pull out a laser sword at any time and just end this. There's a little bit of uh, false advertising, too. So, again, spoilers, because I don't care. Carrie Ann Moss is in it for all of five minutes. The fight choreography is terrible. It all looks like real slow fake Matrix stuff that's not that interesting with people who can't physically do the things they're doing. This woman here, she kicks a table, like a giant table that looks like it weighs like a ton across the floor for, for no reason. And she keeps claiming that she wants to kill people, yet she keeps running away from said people she wants to kill, which also makes no sense. So... Yeah, it's just, it's a thing. So th th this is, uh, who is this? Collider says this is, they love it. Two is better than one. You got two episodes for one. There's an, an impressive ensemble cast. No, there's not. And they already, <laughs> they already, <laughs> they already tipped their hand. There's supposed to be a mystery as to this girl getting falsely accused. They show you that she's a twin immediately. There's no anything. Leslie Headland's writing embodies the best aspect of the Star Wars franchise. Now, this being like the High Republic time, I guess it's a hundred. It's set a hundred years before the rise of the Empire. They call it a, a, a. There's a. There's an opening crawl. There's no crawl. There's just words. A crawl moves. It's called a crawl. No, it just sits there and tells you this was a hundred years before. The beginning of the Jedi, or not the beginning. It's like when the Jedi are all like high and mighty and whatever. And they're like a peacekeeping force around the the galaxy. So here you have like younglings and all sorts of stuff. But the one thing they barely talk about is the force. If I remember the prequels correctly, they were talking about the force left and right and feeling things and the force this and the force that. There's 
they barely even mention that the force exists in this. It's just like a tool to do superhero tricks. That's all it is. So these people are claiming how much fun this is. They're just like, this is amazing balls, right? Uh, let's see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. They don't have anything that interesting. I was just curious to say, what's the best parts? Sleight of hand cleverly played. They keep doing this thing too. Like they're, they're in the fight choreography, there's this dumb thing where she, and she does this in multiple fights. This chick keeps trying to grab lightsabers, yet when she kills one of the Jedi, she doesn't bother to take said lightsaber that she was trying to grab. So I don't really understand what's going on there. I don't even know. I, I just, I really just don't care. Here's Den of Geek. Accolade into a whole new era. Our thoughts on uh, it's a whole new era of Star Wars on TV. This is going to fail spectacularly. No one's going to watch this. There's no famous actors or actresses in this, and it's not very interesting. It's it's pretty boring. Uh, and they're just saying, like, I don't even know what they're saying about, like, what's impressive about it. There, there, there's an intriguing central mystery that reveals the safe self in captivating fashion. They tell you immediately that there are two twins and nobody like there's just nothing. I, I just don't don't get on. There's a lot of bad reviews coming in from what I understand. Um, but no, I, I don't know. I just don't think this is all that good. And the writing is very sloppy. It's very sloppy. So let's get let's get a little bit closer to the plot, because there's just a couple of plot points I want to point out that were stupid, and uh, we can move on with our lives. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up, put some comments down below, and if you want me to keep watching these to torture myself, if you like to see me in pain, then I will do episode two, which I watched and is also extremely stupid. So uh, the opening crawl. Not a crawl. All the Disney Plus shows have deviated from the opening crawl. In fact, I don't think any of them have the opening crawl unless they're the canonical nine episodes, right? So they talk about it's 100 years since the rise of the Empire. It's a time of peace, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's it's it could be an interesting setup. They just, like I said, it's not really all of, it's not offensive. It's just dumb. Like, it's it's fine. It's just when you think a little bit about anything that's going on, it doesn't really work properly. So you have May, who's the this mysterious force warrior. First of all, she's the she goes into a cantina. She's the only person wearing a mask. I'm like, is this, is this like something to do with the the unspecified flu of you know foreign origin or or what are we doing here? No one else is hiding their face like that. And if you remember, you know, Princess Leia had to hide herself. She actually hid herself and wore a mask. Or even Lando hid himself and wore a full face mask. This chick just literally has a mask and just pulls it up. And it's like, at any point, because they, they numerous times mention the description of the woman who's killing Jedi or, ki or killed this one Jedi. She's got purple on. She has a She looks a particular way. I don't understand why people just don't grab her immediately. She does absolutely nothing that, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just, it's stupid. So she fights Carrie Ann Moss. It's real dumb, and uh, it's not particularly exciting. At any point, she could have killed this chick. But no, Carrie Ann Moss just dies because she's saving someone else, I guess. And then someone looks who looks like May. Her name is Osha. She wakes up. And she keeps doing the same thing over and over again. She keeps getting knocked out or going to sleep and waking up like, <gasps> it's like they did the same thing like four times. And of course, she has a like little tiny mini droid, Pip. He's so great. It's He adds so much to the plot, let me tell you. You know, droids used to like be used for exposition and actually used for things. Now they're used for nothing. So apparently she's the classmate. She's getting questioned because she's the classmate of these. She used to be a Padawan, and then she gave it up. Apparently she's, you know, if you don't practice the Force, you just forget how to use it because it's been six years, and she can't remember how to do anything. So instead of taking her in themselves, because you know they have something better to do, they stick her on a droid ship. 
And as soon as she gets on the droid ship, they want to escape. There's a bunch of other prisoners in there who want to escape. That's really stupid. It's just a plot contrivance, and there's literally no reason for that. They could, they had all the characters together, and they easily could have just all gone to Coruscant together, but instead they had this side plot just to pad out the runtime because they have nothing to say in this show. So this prison escape happens. It doesn't... The only thing they use it for is to give you an inkling about Osha's character because there's some guy who's got some sort of parasite on his face and she helps him and saves him. And then he betrays her and steals uh, an escape pod and then she crashes on this planet. You also find out that, that Jedi Master Soul, who happens to be one of the guys from Squid Game, he is... Uh, He's a bad Jedi Master because he really cares about Osha, you know. So then uh, they you find out immediately that she's a twin because uh, Osha and May start communicating with each other through the Force telepathically. They don't know. They don't say it because you would think Osha would immediately be like, I've been communicating with my dead sister through the Force. I think she's alive. But no. So then everybody gets reunited and they go on this, this other planet because... She thinks that they're going to go hunt down another Jedi. Okay. Sounds great. There's a real dumb chase where... I, I don't know why she's running away from the Jedi. She's on this snow planet. She's And she runs away from the Jedi. She sees their, 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 their thing land. She has no way of getting off this planet. So I don't know why she would run and just or just accept that she was in custody. She accepted going into custody the first time. Why did she run away this time? It doesn't make sense. Uh, but then you have it where they back her up to a ledge. And then she almost falls off the cliff because, you know, she'd rather die than turn herself in. Doesn't make any sense. And uh, Soul saves her with a force grab. So exciting. I cannot tell you how boring this is. And then May is on a different planet. And she goes to meet with her master. They have, like, it's exposition because she's not directly t talking to him. And he says something about, like, it's time to kill, the, you know, the Jedi's time of power and peace was a dream. And an acolyte kills the dream. He specifically says, you, you, you can't use a weapon against a Jedi or you will lose. Why? <laughs> Why? Please explain this. Can't you just shoot? I, he does say something about a laser. But then, in the meantime, while he's saying this, he literally lights up his own red lightsaber, which is just stupid. So, I give this first episode, I'm going to say, like, a 3 out of 5. Like, it's not so bad that I hate it but it's it like i just i don't like it i don't really recommend it to anybody i can't even imagine if you're a star wars fan you just you're gonna be confused they hold lightsabers in weird ways they don't really even use them they don't talk about the force there's like one scene where they talk about the force and it just yeah i, I just i don't get it i don't recommend it but like I said, it's not so terrible that it's the the costumes are terrible and, and the makeup is terrible. Like this girl right here that they're showing, she's absolutely her outfit looks like it looks like cosplay. It really does. Like it doesn't look like movie quality. And supposedly they spent like two hundred million dollars on this, and it's gonna bomb. There's no way they they could keep telling everybody in the world that this is great. It's not. It's just it's just not great. The second episode is is just dumber and even worse and has more plot contrivances that don't mean anything to anybody. So. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We do have a, po a podcast you can check out. It's on iTunes. We do live stream at Friday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. Come join us there. Thank you for all the people rumbling and bumbling. And, uh, you know, join the channel. Like, subscribe. Love you all. Let me know if you want me to keep watching this nonsense. I mean, I guess I'm going to watch it anyway because I like to torture myself. But thank you. But I'm on to the next one.